kind of goes into the pictures of Bob that you have in Ethereum or on the blockchain in general. CryptoKitties was a hackathon project that probably didn't strive to change the world, but it did, adding fun and enjoyment to people's lives by showing us what the Ethereum network could handle. You've got projects that are doing great things like OrbitDB, having a completely working product that developers could go and use their decentralized database. Of course, you know, it's not always the best technology and the best principles that win out, right? Often things that are most convenient and easiest for the end user are those, that, those technologies that become the most successful. You have the problem that you have your private key, but it's like all or nothing, right? If a hacker gets access to your private key, he has access to all your funds. So what the Gnosis Save does is you have a private key in each of your devices. In order to send a transaction, you need to confirm that transaction from threshold number of your devices. B millions and billions of users who would come to use blockchain applications. They really, right now, they don't have any idea where to start. We're, we're trying to cater more to the you know, user who it's their first, literally their first crypto experience ever. And when they want to go to send a transaction, all they see is a hexadecimal string that tells them what contract they're interacting with. It will be possible to find people by username in status and very, very shortly there's a replacement for DNS, which is the domain name service on the internet. It's something called ENS, which is the Ethereum name service that allows you to register your own name spaces. And we're going to use that to allow people to actually register their own usernames in status, which are then linked deterministically to their address. And we give them this directory, basically what Yahoo did in the beginning of internet, of blockchain application that solved their specific needs. Uh, and that is rated not by our centralized algorithm, but by the community. Panvala is an open registry that everyone can look into. It's not private data that people are consuming on their own. It's data that the system provides for the public, so users can make better decisions about uh, what they should interact with. We want to give users to give actual power to be deciding about the marketplace or the web application itself and so they easily can participate in governing, governing their favorite web application. What's your long-term goal? No. Decentralized Autonomous Organization? Yes. We're trying to build an infrastructure at Status that will allow... Voting mechanisms, um, fund allocation, and... Permissionless participation. We're trying to build, you know, the tools that allow anyone to, to create the tools that they want. Blockchain needs contributors, and we know this, and it's not just in one way. It's actually a lot of ways. There's so many different kinds of communities. Uh, the people who are your investors and speculative token holders are not your users, are not the people that are technical contributors, are not the people that are sort of mimetic contributors and social media gurus. While consumers don't care about open source at all, they do love the services that they benefit from. We spoke with content creators. They don't actually care where the video is stored. Most of them are after two things. They want to earn more money or they want to be more famous. Why are you putting up with decentralized services that are not as good as centralized services? Uh, okay, my name is Vadim. I'm from uh, Multi, uh, Multi Projects. It's love them. I know. Okay, my name is Vadim. I'm from Multi Projects. It's uh, I think the most coolest, beautiful mobile blockchain wallet uh, that you have ever seen. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, users uh, because we are all hackers, we are all developers, we have no marketing at all. The first step is not the last one. They all started in garages with small teams. Our marketing right now. Uh, <laughs> I need to think about an answer. Imagine how Trump uh, would answer to this question, like, the best possible yeah. idea. I have so many ideas. I have a lot of ideas. They're all best ideas. Marketing is really important for us, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, you can have the greatest ideas, um, but if nobody knows about it, and you and your project, and you're not able to um, finance your, um, yeah, your project, then it's, it's, God, I completely lost my trade. Can you just ask me again? I've had little sleep, no sleep. I'll get it really compressed this time. What was it again? The first step is a clear message. 
Now, I know that there's a lot of fancy ways to talk about your technology, but if it's not clear from an average user, you're probably not going to get very far. And I challenge anyone building a project in here to be able to communicate your message in 140 characters. It was rather un understandable. It's really the combination of private peer-to-peer -peer messaging with a public, global, immutable ledger that allows us to think about and speak about conversational commerce on steroids. What do you want people to do after they read a white paper? Do you want them to go somewhere? Do you want them to sign up? Hundreds of people joining, and then the occasional hi, 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 hi. This is not a community. This is not very engaging. Obviously, our biggest goal, right, is the mainstream adoption of Ethereum. It's talking to the people. It's connecting with the people around you. You're absolutely right. That's thinking about ways which we can really grow that community is going to be critical to our success. We always have someone there ready to answer questions, and our community is actually so much more positive in general than the other campsite communities. Our users are friendlier, our models are more helpful. We want to see this joy in people's faces when they realize, oh, it's actually this easy to create a decentralized application. You know, that is what keeps us going. That is, what, that is why we're doing this full time. This is the formula to get you from people just knowing what your project is called to what it does to actually contributing to your project. We're all working on like the same shared computer. It does lead to a very radically different thing in terms of community and collaboration. And in fact, particularly around governance. In Aragon, you can create an organization, you know, in any place in the world, um, have it on the blockchain and interact with some other person in the other uh, edge of the world. When you enter into an agreement inside this jurisdiction, so you may say, okay, I want to enter into this legal agreement, I'm going to pay you, you know, X amount of money um, for you to create a website. That's an example, right? And then you said ANT as collateral. And this collateral is the limited liability that you have in case the other party doesn't, doesn't work out. Um, if the other party doesn't work out, you can go to a court, you can appeal, and then you can get that collateral there for you. At any time somebody puts a proposal that doesn't match your rules, somebody just flags it. To enable the world to fact check and eliminate the effects of misleading information. What is the location of the object, what is the temperature of storage, or any other parameters. And then all of these uh, records are linked to a particular certificate, which can be a QR code or a tracer, and all that is recorded on the blockchain. And the token is used to create those records. The second use of the token is in the network itself. You can stake the token into master nodes in order to either process the data or to record it and have it available for other users. With trying to have a token which sort of represents ownership of an organization and sort of behaves like equity in that organization. Of course, equity is the most security-ish thing you can possibly have. How do you create that without it being a security um, and a, a, as a necessary component? You have a voice within the ecosystem. It's not just talking about it is actually the opportunity for you to implement it and to get paid immediately for it. It's really just creating a huge obligation to a bunch of people that you're going to be delivering a return. As long as we grow the use of the network, um, you know, that should increase uh, demand for the token. Now you've got a whole bunch of people in your Telegram group saying, when Moon? Um, <laughs> when Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, this, this feeling of, of enormous pressure, even though you've basically got little more than an idea, to actually start really delivering hard upon that. But in practical terms, you just, it just doesn't work that way. You can't just throw 50 people at a problem and hope it's going to get solved. We are hoping to have some sort of minimal, minimal vi viable demo maybe by the end of the night, but that might be ambitious. Uh... Always, always longer than we want. More important than the incentives which are baked into the system are the fact that we disincentivized uh, bad actors by making it economically unfeasible to spam the network or post inaccurate information because anybody can open a dispute at any time and disprove any false information. Part of that problem is, is a task for everyone in the community to improve communication and education of, uh, of the general investor um, because there is an asymmetry of information for people perhaps in this room who are investing um, 
by definition, know more about what they're doing than the woman on the Clapham Omnibus who's been persuaded to do it in January this year. Commits are like conversations, right? Someone submits something, someone submits something back. You can like it, you can comment on it. You know, usually people use that for investment decisions where if they see some project is making a lot of GitHub commits, then they can see, okay, but it's ranked fairly low. Maybe something interesting is happening where the project simply inflated the amount of commits they're making with fake data just to look like they're doing something. That's fucked up. Yeah. Sorry. You know that GitHub was bought by Microsoft, right? And that was pretty bad. Yeah, that's completely that is fucked, fucked up. up. Probably GitHub goes broke. Um, imagine what they could do. I mean, they would be pretty bad. Like they could basically take down the whole like crypto movement like in no time, but just like updating things um, on their servers, which is pretty bad. Um, with Pando, that cannot happen. And the cool thing about this also is, once you have decentralized it you can put governance on top of it. In our case, you could make an application layer where people can actually post their own reviews with validated evidence of what the truth is around those commits to prevent people from making incorrect decisions. Facebook does seem in the most desperate need for something like this at the moment. So if they did manage to implement this of themselves, then I'll be incredibly happy for them because that would be progress towards our vision. And essentially, that's what we care about. Amazing. <laughs> Excited to hear it. Trigger warning. Giving yourself only a single opportunity to raise uh, money as a company, you risk overcapitalization in the short term, but then massive undercapitalization later on. We're not really in a rush for funding because, you know, we've we're good. Indeed, if you have too much money, then it comes along with a whole a load of other baggage, especially when that money is, comes, comes from crypto, things like OPSEC, you know, are you spending your whole time worried that lots of other people know that you have just received a lot of money, which is way more than what would ever be needed. Telegram said specifically that they were going to hold on to more than 51% of the tokens so that they'll never be a decentralized yeah, system. That's that is fucked up. up. But if you can understand why people are coming to your project, what thing they're serving, you're going to keep them for a lot longer. If they just come for money, they're going to go leave whenever there's a better place to make money. I don't understand how regular money works, but I still use it every day. So <laughs> I don't need to understand every single bell and whistle of trading. Free for daily. Okay, it's almost impossible that uh, right now blockchains cannot support all the amount of people. The big problem with um, uh, scalability is Interpret interoperability. Uh. Interoperability, so that's why we combine these two topics together. Where uh, developers are used to having databases where you can actually run queries to find specific data that you want to show to the user. And so as we're building applications that need to be able to compete with traditional web and mobile apps, uh, that becomes really important. Imagine like you have to scale a pension system on top of blockchain, which would mean like you have to handle 80 million transactions per month. This is at least today not possible with Ethereum and we are right now evaluating and researching how we could do that. We work on a token contract that uses ZK Snark as a means to compress the balance instead of storing all the balance of the token on chain. The reason we're not switching is because we don't see major advantages in any of the other smart contract platforms. The Ethereum community for me is really about getting together with a bunch of people, having a lot of fun, producing, and focus is always on creativity, helping each other. And that really makes a massive difference because it means innovation happens at a faster pace. It means there's a diversity of perspectives which is missing from other networks and technologies. It means that in general, the network tends to move forward at a far faster and yet more robust way. You should see it widely because there are a lot of new technologies. You don't know exactly which technology in the future will, be, will provide you better experience for customers. And in these conferences, you talk to people and you learn about other opinions that you would never have learned online, even though there's plenty of material out there, it's just too much noise. This is speculative still, this entire um, multi-billion dollar game we're playing. And I think the most important driver to control that externality of the volatility of the price is to onboard users. But then you have a chicken and egg problem because you can't put them on an experimental system. Whenever we start taking a fee, we'll take about a 5% fee. So they're going to get 95%, which is the usual 50% is what they were getting. So this is a whole nother world opened. For you, it's a fantasy. 
But for us, it's a problem that only gets worse. Most normal people do not know that. PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, and others have systematically declined us service and redlined us, leaving room for shady companies to come in and fuck us with fees. And then we pay taxes on that. We're still in the camp of hoping that like somebody takes on the gargantuan task of putting the whole crypto team on their back and figuring out how to do you know, token, token purchases with cards. If you want to get things like banking, if you want to deal with um, sort of regulated financial service providers, you need to do KYC and AML. In order to uh, bridge fiat with crypto, often you have to hold customer funds in, in fiat currencies, and holding those requires financial services licenses, and it requires a whole bunch of regulatory stuff. Uh, that differs between different jurisdictions around the world. The other aspect of that that we discussed is, is that it encourages also short-term thinking. Right. Um, and, uh, and that's something that we would have liked to try to get away from. Aside from Bitcoin, right, I think that one's kind of tried and true, but aside from... Um, all right, maybe, all right maybe, that, maybe, that's, maybe that's a debate. I thought that just everybody in this room agreed that Satoshi was a genius, and that was a pretty darn good incentive design scheme. Since the release of Bitcoin, anybody has an opportunity to write code that touches value. Uh, and because these systems are open source, it means that any developer or any team can get started right away without having to seek permission from the banking system. If it goes mainstream, there's a risk that the gap between the rich and the poor is actually going to increase. And also Satoshi kept a lot of coins for himself. And there is a lot of um, power into foundations or legal entities retaining some part of the tokens so they can work and pay salaries and you know hire people. But you look at things like the current wealth distribution in Ethereum. Is it really decentralized? Blockchains tend to give priority to resources to those with the most money to spend. For example, you can pay more fees to get your transactions mined earlier. I come from Africa. People don't have really powerful laptops and access to cloud software that's often required to access these technologies. One of the major goals is that you're going to be able to run it on your smartphone. Talking directly with your friends, they're going directly over Whisper, which is a peer-to-peer end-to-end encrypted dark messaging protocol that's part of the Ethereum stack. We run Ethereum nodes as a service for people in the community to immediately get connected to the Ethereum network. Your first DAP application built on top of Ethereum. Design, user experience, user interface, for us is very important nowadays. You code small contracts, and you code your web part, and you can see, you can actually see a live view of your DAP as you're developing it. Because we don't have simulators yet or anything, it's like designing airplanes in 1912, right? As opposed to in even 2012. But in 2012, we still don't have great airplane simulators, right? You don't normally want your 747 to fork mid-flight. Um, bad for business. It's one other thing too, like, you know, depending on who you ask, forks are a good thing or forks are a bad thing, right? And I think uh, in this context here, forks are a wonderful thing because you can actually explore many design variants very, very quickly. And then the fork that does, does well, um, adds something new, etc., can um, really uh, survive. And it's, you know, sort of a new variant of a design pattern that's clearly working, right? You have to know a, a bit about coding, a bit about Solidity coding, a bit about uh, JavaScript. To enable this, for even for non-coders, that is, of course, within, within our vision. We will see uh, exactly how and when we can start implementing such features. It's a lot of time, work, and energy to stay under the radar for these traditional financial institutions. I love the restraint that they've had in having just a TCR, like ad chain and spank chain and so on. I think that's really great, actually. Spank chain is amazing. Beyond that, too, you know, um, there's other designs that have worked um, that are kind of amazing, right? Like D3D, it was kind of an experimental cool thing that just like, wow, right? But to us, like in the world of thinking about token dynamics, it's amazing. Trigger warning. You mentioned Bitcoin, spank chain. Um, so basically, it's still like drugs, porn, and Ponzi's with from a 3D. Like those are those are still the killer apps. Like two You think that writing a Ponzi scheme shouldn't be that hard of a token engineering problem? But even that was hacked, right? I mean, and it was hacked in a genius way by manipulating the underlying Ethereum chain. There's so much money to be made if you would just suck it up and stop being babies. Yeah. Thank you. And it's you. okay if you're like not into sex stuff. You don't have to be. It's just tech. Trigger warning. The houses that we sleep in are funded by mortgages. The cars that we drive in are funded by auto loans. 
the businesses that employ us stock inventory using debt. The infrastructure we build is funded often by municipal bonds. The education we receive is funded by student loans. And even the states that govern us rely on debt fundraising in order to kind of keep their day-to-day -day operations going. So it seems like so many parts of our lives are funded by debt. Which seems absolutely mental, but... <laughs> really? For prediction markets that have a very long uh, resolution date, um, you're not necessarily going to trust um, somebody to pay you off in 20 years or whatever. So that's where the blockchain comes in. The next era of, of the financial system is going to be built by you guys. What do you want to build? Magic cent of, of the crypto. Uh, Can, what's this? Can you give some more details? Oh, it's, it's very simple. I called it QR code killer. I can transfer you uh, Bitcoin when you are near me without, uh, without sharing your location. Well, let's take that a step back as well and let's ask why do you want to build? What's the advantage? Because I could send you the same address without being close to the other. Uh, I can share the address with status and then send the payment. Okay, yeah, yeah. like this. Okay. <laughs> we spend about a whole day in all of our um, hackathon time creating the Ethereum wallet that is operated directly from a government issued ID, implementing a 384 bit big non library in Solidity, doing all the fielder and modular field arithmetic on top of that, and building an elliptic curve library on top of that, and building an elliptic curve digital signature algorithm on top of that. And as long as you have an identity with any other um, integrated platform, we allow you to verify that identity without revealing who you are to us or any other participant on the network. And this mm -hmm. is how we also prevent people from <coughs> spamming that network by creating multiple user accounts. This is my Estonian ID number. It will now request signing of the transaction, which asks me for my PIN, which he somehow knows. <laughs> <laughs> I will have my fucking personal wallet on mainnet controlled by my government-issued ID. If I lose my card, I can go to the Estonian embassy and renew my access to my Ethereum wallet. How about KYC AML for this one? Build in. We're committed to our philosophies and principles and values around security and privacy. And once we feel that those values are upheld in the product itself, we'll feel a bit more comfortable releasing that in the App Store. We, we're in our public beta, so it makes sense that we don't have a ton of variety in the kinds of performers that we have. Yeah, we would like to focus on high value content. There are, are definite plans to be open source as soon as humanly possible and to begin and, and nurture a healthy developer community around it to push the mission forward. If you want to give a hint to help someone, you're always afraid of the consequences of that hint that you gave. Blockchain technology allows for privacy, security, um, autonomy and this like permissionless nature that we keep talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and it removes the reliance on third centralized third parties. Perfect, because we can reward that hint and with, it, uh, with even knowing what it, who you are. When people come in and they say things that make a model uncomfortable just to try to do that, it's some models know how to handle it because they've been in the business for so long. Some models are new and it really kind of taints their experience. So I hope that it makes you think about the things that you say to a model who is opening up, giving you their most intimate moments, performing for you, with you. A lot of people feel more comfortable saying things online that they would never say in real life, or they think that there's not a real person on the receiving end. And it's incredible to see the extremes that people will go to when they think there are no repercussions. We have enough resources in the world today to feed every human on the planet, to house and clothe every human. It's a question of allocation, and more than anything, it's a question of intent. Are we brave enough, are we strong enough to um, use these technologies for good? Superblocks Lab is uh, open source, it's totally free, it's on GitHub, and uh, nothing makes us more happy than if, if you uh, submit a bug report, a feature request, and of course, a pull request. What are the channels that people can reach out to you? Well, 
we right now you can like talk to us right now here go to creation of network in this world theater internet medium telegram email and slack we are on pipet <laughs> pipet is a twitter clone which on the ethereum blockchain uses ipfs you could be next on the slack show your project could be here you never know we wanted people to build the apps that have a native feeling there should be no distinction between what is a status feature and what is an extension the things that it is possible to conceive of with this technology and with these networks are nearly limitless right and the horizons of the possible stretch so much further than almost any of us can imagine so you know imagine and let's get to work